last week you may or may not have caught my video about products and techniques that I used to love but wouldn't now. Now this is the counterpart to this. This is products and techniques that I used to hate and now I get along pretty well with. So just like the last video, there's going to be five products as well as three techniques. So I'll link the other video. I think it's here. I worked out one time that I needed to point to John. And let's get into it. The first product that I just did not get on with at all when I originally had it, which was probably in 2016-ish, is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is a liquid eyeliner. It seems to be pretty well liked and pretty highly recommended, somewhat across the board on YouTube. And I was convinced when I first bought it that it was going to make me good at liquid liner. Now, there were two problems. One, I just wasn't willing to really practice to get good at it. In fact, I didn't really do the practicing to get good at liquid liner until sort of this past spring and into the summer. Also, I have somewhat oily eyelids. I also have somewhat hooded eyes and I sometimes struggle with things transferring or uh, just getting messy throughout the day. And I didn't realize at that time that I at least would be needing to put on eye primer before I tried to do liquid liner. At the time, I thought that you really only needed primer for shadow and I thought the way that I wanted to wear this eyeliner was sort of just a bold wing and then like a bold lip. I thought that would look very cute and it would have if I had just practiced more and been a little bit more open to trying different things. I have not tried the Epic Ink Liner again. In fact, I don't think that I've tried any of the products on this list again. However, I think it would work really well for me now. And I think that when my Kat Von D tattoo liner finally runs dry, uh, if it ever does, it seems to be an unending fountain of black ink. Uh, I think that might be the one I repurchase. Product number two, the CoverGirl Blue Green Quad. I will see if I can find the exact name and the picture of the exact one I had. I do not believe that it is in CoverGirl's line anymore. They seem to have pretty much redone, I mean, really their entire line, but in particular, quite recently, I think they redid their uh, quad. Now I had this when I first got into makeup. This was not the first eyeshadow I ever had. I believe that was, sh uh, no, it wasn't Shimmering Sands. It was a purple trio, but I bought this and uh, Shimmering Sands on the same day. And I just, I just did not have the skill yet to know how to do eyeshadow. <laughs> And I certainly didn't know how to do eyeshadow well enough to do a good job of playing with blues. And I happen to uh, have done a video just before this. I shot my stash and there was a color that was really similar to this uh, shade from NYX, which I actually was just saying how much I don't like. And I mean, this... I still don't really know how to work with and make look really good. Uh, at 19, I definitely did not know what to do with this. And though I think this particular equivalent shade in the palette probably would still not be great for me, there was a very pretty sort of minty seafoam green shade that had some sparkle to it, which was lovely, and a white with sort of a bluish green cast and some little bit of sparkle to it that was also very lovely and I didn't realize at the time how much you could mix and match from palette to palette. I 
very much did a purple look, a neutral look, or this blue-green look. I didn't think to maybe grab a neutral from one palette and the green and combine them. So I ended up trying to blend out this blue all the time, which always looked like a bruise. And I ended up decluttering the palette because of that. Number three, the Wet n Wild Raven Raisin Lipstick. This was a uh, sort of a grayish purple, sort of a grayed out lavender shade. It was very pretty. I really adored looking at it in the tube, but I just didn't know how to make that kind of color work for me. In fact, I only recently bought quite a similar type of shade. This is the T Rose Lip Lacquer from e.l.f. This is a little bit less purple than Raven Raisin was, but it's a pretty similar type of shade. And like with Raven Raisin, my first thought when I got this was to try to make it work with very cool eyes. And because now I actually play around with makeup rather than just, you know, trying it four or five times with basically the same results and then banishing it to the back of a drawer and eventually decluttering it, I played around with it a bit more. I found out that it actually looks really nice blotted down and with some warmer cheeks and or eyes. So I actually really like this and it kind of makes me sad to think that maybe I could have liked Raven Raisin as well as plenty of other fairly bold lipsticks that I had, you know, five or six years ago that this didn't end up sticking around for very long because I thought they were too bold, I thought they washed me out, I thought they didn't play nicely with other pieces of makeup, but I probably could have made them work. And I think now I would probably really like a lot of them. Now, number four is more of a formula than a particular product, just because I don't remember the two that I actually had. And these were the ColourPop Metallic Super Shock Shadows. Now, the first Super Shocks that I ever bought were a golden shade and a bit of a more copper shade. And they were both satin finishes, loved them, panned both of them completely. Then I thought I would branch out a little bit, so I bought a copper metallic and a, I think a gold metallic as well. And I just, I just could not make these work. I got glitter everywhere because I didn't know what glitter glue was. And when I saw YouTubers using these, for some reason, I don't know if they didn't mention that they were using glitter glue or if they actually weren't and they managed to just keep these in place without it, but oh my goodness, I had glitter fallout all over my cheeks all the time. It was so disappointing. I ended up having to declutter both of them. I believe they both kind of dried up before I found out what glitter glue was. And now I actually do have a super shock that I really like. This is Ladybird, and this is actually an ultra glitter, I'm realizing, though I think the formula is probably pretty similar. It also has quite a lot of glitter, and now that I know what glitter glue is, I have minimal fallout. There's still some, but it's not just party city all under my eyes anymore. Number five is setting spray. Now, I think that I just didn't understand what this was really for at the time. All I ever heard about was people talking about how dewy it made them look, which I didn't realize just how dry putting a bunch of powder on your face could be because I didn't powder that much. And I definitely didn't want to look more dewy because I've gotten a little less oily over time, but at the time I had a little bit of oily skin. I thought that I still had very oily skin, which I had had uh, previously, like in high school. My skin was an absolute grease pit. 
but it had gotten better throughout college, but I didn't really understand how much better it had gotten until a couple of years ago. So I was not looking to be dewy, but I ended up buying one. Actually ended up somehow acquiring three. I think I only bought one outright and I think maybe I got one from a family member and I think one came like in a target box with some other things that I actually did want. And now I'll use it occasionally both to lighten up powder if I've gone a little bit overboard and more often to foil eyeshadows. So I've not made setting spray an integral part of my routine, but it is something that I understand the purposes of and will occasionally reach for now. Now for three techniques that I didn't think were useful, good for me personally when I started doing makeup. And the first one is filling in brows. Now in my defense, this was probably in like 2013, 2014, and this was when people were going nuts over Cara Delevingne. And they were making these awful Instagram like block brows, which I never liked. And I thought that was just what your brows ended up looking like if you sold them in. Now I realize that if I fill in my brows just a little bit, I you know, actually give definition to my face. I bring more attention to my eyes. I can often make my brows and my hair match a little bit better and just look a little bit more put together. I don't like that term, but it's how I feel when I have my brows on and now it's a part of my routine that I will do sometimes even if I'm not wearing any other makeup. Number two, I did not understand the point of light coverage Foundation is what I was specifically thinking when I made this list, but really light coverage anything. In my mind at the time, it was I either wanted to cover absolutely everything, because again, when I first started getting into makeup, I had a lot of acne. Luckily, a lot of that has cleared up over the years, and I think the camera is helping me uh, hide that I still have the occasional little spots. I think I've got some right along my jaw right now, but nothing near the extreme that I had when I was in high school and sort of into my first year of college. So in my mind, if I wanted to wear a foundation, I wanted like Estee Lauder double wear. I never actually did own double wear because that was out of my price range and I would actually been kind of burned by some CoverGirl foundation in the past and sort of sworn off of it. But I understood the point of that level of coverage. I didn't understand why you would want to put on like a BB cream because I've tried using BB creams and tinted moisturizers. I think they were mostly advertised as tinted moisturizers at that point and they didn't really cover my acne. So what was the point? Now I don't wear a ton of complexion products. So, I mean, I guess I'm still on the same page as my past self on at least that piece, but if I do, it is quite a light coverage product. I mean, the only foundation foundation I own right now is this e.l.f. foundation serum, which is absolutely a tinted moisturizer. There is n almost no coverage whatsoever in this, but I really do enjoy it and I think the tiny bit of evening out and a little bit of extra radiance that it gives me is very nice. And finally, number three, super bold and super bright eyeshadow. Now I won't say that what I'm wearing today is super bold or super bright, but it is definitely far bolder and far brighter than I thought I could pull off when I was 18, 19 years old. I think it was the fault of that blue-green eyeshadow quad that convinced me of this. I mean, I don't think too many of my fellow 18-year-olds at the time really could have made that work really well for them, but I had just started using makeup, so I really couldn't. And I think that it sort of convinced me that I just couldn't pull off colorful eyeshadow at all. I really didn't try again with it until maybe 
three years ago, I started dipping my toe into color a little bit more. Like, okay, we can use a purple. Not a bright purple, but we can use purple. And then, you know, branching out a little further, maybe we can use pink and peach. And now my viewpoint has totally changed. I've worked my way up to being okay with pretty much any color of the rainbow. And I really do prefer the way that a little bit more color than a true neutral looks on my lid. Okay, so confession time. What did you absolutely hate when you first started doing makeup? Probably because you didn't understand it or just didn't know what to do with it, but assumed that it just would never work for you. I'm sure I'm not alone in having done that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you will consider liking and subscribing if you did. Really hope to see you next time.